Good evening and welcome from John R. Nelson Gymnasium here at Culver Community Junior Senior High School. Tonight's matchup between the Rochester Zebras and the Culver Cavaliers. We're going to get the starting lineups here for the JV. Number 10, Derek Crawford. So it's going to be Clevenger, Strasser, McCarter, Bullinger, and Huddeshell for the visiting Rochester Zebras. Number 31, Kathy Bates. Number 40, Olivia Overmeyer. And number 51, Amaya Williams. And the starters for the Cavaliers, Bren Barrett, Ashley Pugh, Cassidy Banks, Olivia Overmeyer, and Maya Williams. Cavaliers get the tip. Man to man defense by the Zebras. And Bollinger able to get the steal, gets it up ahead. Hadeshell trying to clear it out to Strasser. Passes deflected out of bounds off the Cavaliers. The Zebras wearing their black unis with gold lettering, gold trim. Cavaliers in their white home uniforms with white shorts, black and orange trim. Strasser left hand layup no good. Obermeyer battle for the ball. It's going to be a jump that will go to the Zebras. Out of shell will inbounds baseline left for the Zebras. How to shell into Strasser. Back to how to shell into Bullinger. Quickly double teamed by Williams and Pugh. Clevenger, three-pointer, good. Riley Clevenger gets the Zebras on the board with a three-point bucket. Barrett with McCarter on her. Should be an interesting matchup here all night long. Both uh, pretty equal in size there and quickness. That's going to be tipped out of bounds off of Rochester. It will stay Culver's ball. Barrett just inside the three-point line. Puts it in. Bren Barrett gets the Cavaliers on the board with a two. A little three-quarter court pressure by the Cavaliers. Nice pass. Strasser into Bullinger. Can't put the bucket in. And she's going to get called for a travel turnover for the Zebras. Oh, nice backdoor pass. Overmeyer can't put it in. Strasser with the rebound. Strasser trying to push it up ahead to McCarter. It's going to go off of the fingertips of Ella McCarter out of bounds. Cavaliers get the ball back. 5.13 to go here in the first quarter. Rochester leads the Cavaliers 3-2 here in the early going. Cross-court pass to Barrett. Banks crossover over to Williams. 10-foot jumper from Williams off the back iron, off the front iron. Bollinger gets it out. Clevenger up ahead to McCarter. Jump stop off the mark. Weak side rebound. Bollinger for two. Yeah. 
Overmeyer over to Barrett. Barrett free throw line. Good defense by the Zebras. Pugh kicks it out. Three-point attempt is long. Barrett gets the offensive glass. Barron kicks it over to Pew inside over Meyer. Loses the handle, kicks it back out. Barron, 15 footer off the back iron. Rebound McCarter. Carter running the point for the Zebras. Strasser gets around Williams, kicks it out. Clevenger baseline three, short. Rebound Bullinger. Rebound put back, no good for Bollinger. Williams gets the rebound, kicks it over to Bren Barrett. Barrett's going to bring it across the timeline. Cuts in, good job there by Strasser. Just inside the three-point line, that shot was long for Banks. And a travel called on Pugh. Another turnover by Culver. Gives the ball back to the Zebras, 3.20 to go here in the first. Clevenger brings it across with Barrett on her. Gets a screen from Bollinger. And a foul called from behind. They're going to get number 40, Olivia Overmeyer, on the foul. That would be the first foul of the game. How to shell will inbounds. Baseline left. Kicks it up to Clevenger. How to shell between two Cavaliers, loses the handle. Overmeyer gets it, pushes it up ahead to Banks. Banks one-on-one -on -one versus McCarter, kicks it back out to Barron. Overmeyer gets the loose ball. Three-pointer baseline, no good. Rebound to How to shell, a quick jump ball call, and that will stay Culver's ball. Savannah Eccles going to check into the game for Rochester for how to shell. Williams kicks it up. Barrett will reset the offense. Carter doing a nice job. She goes down. Overmeyer, 10-footer is short. Eccles gets the rebound, brings it across the timeline for the Zebras. Thanks, guarding Clevenger. Takes it back up top, resets it, gives it to Strasser. Williams guarding her. Switch, Barrett with the steal. Cavaliers ball. Barrett will slow it up. Brings it across the timeline. Under two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Pew with Clevenger on her. Kicks it over to Banks. Over to Barrett. Three ball off the glass. No good. Clevenger gets the weak side rebound. Pushes it ahead. Dara Strasser from the right side. And that is going to be blocked by Obermeyer. Out of bounds. It will be Rochester ball. Elizabeth Weaver going to check into the game for Bullinger, as is number 42, Emily Viger. She will come in for Ella McCarter. No subs as of yet for the Cavaliers. Strasser just inside the three-point line. Jumper is good. Dara Strasser for two. Cavaliers trail by five. Nice backdoor cut over Meyer. Can't get the roll. Gets the offensive glass. And she's going to go to the free throw line. The foul coming on number 45, Elizabeth Weaver. That will put Libby Overmeyer at the line shooting two for the Cavaliers. Nice backdoor cut. Libby wasn't able to put the bucket in, but she got her own rebound. And she is off on the first free throw. Second free throw by the freshman is good. 
Coming into the game is Willow Harrington, and she will give Overmeyer a break. 7-3, minute seven to go here in the first quarter. Clevenger brings it across, kicks it out. Viger has it. Viger over to Strasser. Strasser gets a screen from Eccles, kicks it over. Baseline three. Clevenger, no good. Rebound. And they're going to say it's off of the Cavaliers. Rochester ball with 50 seconds to go. Oh, nice pass in. Weaver turnaround. They're going to call a foul on Willow Harrington, her first, team's second. And that's going to send the junior, Elizabeth Weaver, to the free throw line, shooting two for the Zebras. And Weaver puts in the first. Makes them both. Two for two for Weaver. She has two points. The lead is now six for the Zebras. Bryn Barrett brings it across the timeline with 40 seconds to go here in the quarter. Barrett kicks it down to Banks. Looking for Harrington. Cross quarter to Barrett. Barrett's going to take it back up top and reset the offense. Kicks it down to Banks. Banks, Strasser tight on her. And good defense there by Savannah Eccles. Knocks it out of bounds. Cavaliers will have the ball here on the near sideline. Barrett has it out top. Eccles guarding Barrett. Good defense there. Eccles comes up with the ball for the Zebras. Clock winding down here and not going to get a shot off. After one, Rochester leads Culver 9-3. We'll take a break and come back with second quarter JV action here from John R. Nelson Gymnasium in just a moment. You're watching RTC and TV. Back here four. at Culver after one in the JV contest, the Zebras lead 9-3. Bryn Barrett had a bucket and Olivia Overmeyer scored a free throw for Culver. For the Zebras, Clevenger with three, Strasser with two, and Audrey Bollinger with two, and Weaver with two on two for two from the free throw line for the Zebras. The Rochester ball here as we start the second quarter. And Barrett gets in the passing lane to steal right out of the gate for the Cavaliers. Into the game at the break, number 14, Lily Watson. Banks on Clevenger, gets a screen from Eccles. Into Weaver, good double team. Just inside the three-point line, that shot is off the mark for Watson. Overmeyer quickly across the timeline. And we're going to have a quick foul on the Zebras, Ella McCarter. Her first, team's second. Eccles on Barrett. Up top, Overmeyer. Kicks it over to Barrett. Eccles on her, and... Eccles going to get called with two hands on Barrett. So she will pick up her first, the Zebra's third. Pugh will inbounds here on the near sideline. And good defense by the Zebra's forces the five-second count. Ball goes back over to Rochester. Cavaliers in a man-to-man -man defense. Overmeyer switches on 
Clevenger, jump ball, and that will go to the Cavaliers on the alternating possession. Banks up top to Overmeyer. Barrett left wing three, just short. Watson is going to get called for a travel as she went to the ground with the ball. That will give the ball back to the Cavaliers. And Bollinger going to check back into the contest for Weaver. Pew will inbounds, baseline right. Clevenger gets a hand on it, knocks it out. Try it again. So they're going to switch that up. Barrett is going to take the ball out. Get it into Williams. Kick it back up top. The runner in the lane is no good for Banks. And it's going to be out off of the Cavaliers. Rochester will have possession. 5.30 to go here in the first half. Hottishell getting ready to check back into the game for the Zebras. Over the top, Bullinger trying to get it to Eaton. And that's going to be a jump ball. Possession will stay Rochester. Into the game for the Cavaliers, Lola Guiso Fanchea. I'm going to have to double check this pronunciation there. I think we called her Lola last time. Barrett back up to Overmeyer. McCarter on Overmeyer now. Banks gets into the lane, kicks it over Overmeyer. Lola over to Barrett, right wing three. Barrett off the mark. Offensive glass, they're going to say, is off of McCarter. Cavaliers will get it. Coming in will be Pew. She will come in for Lola. That one goes through Barron's hands right into the hands of Ella McCarter. Carter pushes it across, gets it over to How to Shell. How to Shell gives it to Riley Clevenger. Clevenger resets. Nice cut, or, uh, McCarter. Unable to put in the eight-footer from the baseline. Bryn Barrett comes up with it. And Clevenger quickly comes back and pokes it away from behind. Cavaliers will have it out of bounds, baseline right. And the Cavaliers will call a 30. So we'll keep it here with 4.29 to go. The score is 9-3. Same score we had at the end of the first quarter, so nobody has scored here almost halfway through the second quarter. Cavaliers will have the ball baseline right coming out of their timeout. Still looking for the first points here of the second quarter for either team. 4.29 to go. Nice inbounds to Williams, and there are two more Cavalier points. Great inbounds play coming out of the timeout. And Williams cuts the lead to four. We have a foul on Ashley Pugh. That's her first team's third. How to shell will inbounds far sideline. Gets it in Bollinger back out. How to shell right wing three is short. Rebound Barrett. Barrett with Clevenger on her. Brings it across, kicks it over to Pew. Banks just inside the free throw line. Good. 4-2 for the freshman, Cassidy Banks. And just like that, the Cavaliers are within two of the Rochester Zebras. Baseline three rims out for McCarter. Bullinger, though, gets the offensive rebound. McCarter, free throw line jumper off the mark. Rebound to Banks. 
Clevenger coming up behind. Banks crosses over. Ball is loose. Pugh gets knocked down after the shot. No call. Clevenger pushes it up ahead to McCarter. That one is tipped out and stolen by Barrett. McCarter on the floor. And quick jump ball called. That'll give the ball to the Cavaliers. Harrington back into the game for Williams. Strasser, I think, came into the game for Eccles. And a jump ball forced by the Zebras. Back over to Rochester. And Coach Bowers wants a timeout, so it is a full. We will take a break with them and be back with more here from John R. Nelson Gymnasium in just a moment. Buy your banking with a simply free checking account from First Federal Savings Bank. At First Federal Savings Bank, we appreciate your referrals. Refer your friend to open a Simply Free checking account. When your friend opens a checking account, you both can receive a free gift. It's as easy as one, two, three. Simply Free checking from First Federal Savings Bank, a simpler way to bank. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. Back here at Culver Community High School, JV Contest 302 to go here in the first half. Four straight Culver points has cut the Zebra lead to two points. Coming out of the Zebra timeout, it will be Rochester ball. Out of shell. Open three off of the back iron and the rebound to Obermeyer. Obermeyer kicks it out to Pugh. Pugh walks across the timeline for the Cavaliers. Strasser on Pugh. Kicks it over. Banks. Barrett with the ball on the right baseline. Gets a screen from Banks. And three-second call on Williams, too long in the paint. Gives the ball back over to the Zebras. Okay, Mano, I'll say it next time. That pass goes out of bounds. Cavaliers get the ball back, 2.10 to go here on RTC TV4. Cavaliers looking to tie it or maybe take the lead on a three-point bucket, trailing by two. Right at two minutes to go here in the first half. Zebras still looking to score their first points of the second quarter. Barrett pull up from 10 off the back iron. Williams offensive rebound, trying to get it over to Overmeyer, and Strasser is going to come away with it. Poked away, though, by Banks, or Pew. Banks with it, trying to kick it up off of Overmeyer out of bounds. A little flurry there by the Cavaliers. Some good defense by both teams. Clevenger gets trapped right across the timeline. Not where you want to pick up your dribble. Overmeyer almost gets it from Hadeshell, gets it over. Top of the key, how to shell back iron. Banks one on one versus how to shell, puts it in for two. What a play by Banks. And we are tied at 9 6 0 run by the Cavaliers. Tipped out of bounds off of Strasser. Six zero run here in the second quarter has tied the game at nine. 
Banks loses the ball. Strasser picks it up. Banks tips it away. And Barrett and Strasser going at it, and it will be a jump ball, and Cavaliers will get the ball on the alternating possession. Pugh, I don't think, has been out of the game there. You can see she's getting kind of winded here, less than a minute to go in the half. Barrett, jumper, runner good. Brent Barrett gives the Cavaliers their first lead of the game. And it is an 8-0 run by the Cavaliers here in the second quarter. And they're going to get Bollinger on a foul. Her first, that will be Rochester's fourth. Elizabeth Weaver checking into the game for Bollinger. So the Cavaliers with an opportunity to build on a two-point lead here with 40 seconds to go in the half. Clevenger. Barrett was uh, not really paying attention and uh, Clevenger able to come around from behind, but it's going to be out of bounds off the Zebras. Gives Pugh a chance to reset the offense here. And they're going to say that was kicked, so the Cavaliers will get the inbounds here again. Gets it into Barrett. The runner going left. No good for the freshman Barrett. Nice kick up. Clevenger to Strasser, and that is the first points of the quarter for the Rochester Zebras, and we are tied at 11. Strasser has four for Rochester. And the Zebras trapping in the half court. Good ball movement. Livy Overmeyer just inside the three. Offensive glass. Bryn Barrett at the buzzer. Puts the Cavaliers up 13 to 11 as we go into the half here. What a good quarter for the Culver Cavaliers. Cavaliers lead 13-11. We will take a break and come back. We've got some halftime stats and get ready for second half action here from the JV contest here from Culver Community. You're watching RTC TV4. We'll be back in a few with the halftime. It will be Zebra Ball here to start the second half. And we are underway. And that one is tipped away. Grace Sieber into the game, and she's going to lose it out of bounds. Good defense there by Bollinger. So the sophomore Grace Sieber starts off the second half with Barrett. Overmeyer, Williams, and Banks, the other four for Culver. Nice backdoor. Strasser can't put it in. Sieber with the rebound, and she's going to be followed by Clevenger. For the Zebras, it's Clevenger, Strasser, Bullinger, McCarter, and Mia Houdeschel, the five original starters. That is the first personal on Riley Clevenger. Zebra's a uh, little zone look here to start things off. A little 2-3, little trapping zone it looks like they're dropping down. Good ball movement. Zebra top of the key, three-pointer off the mark. And it's going to be out of bounds off of Cassidy Banks. Zebras will have the ball. 6.13 to go here in the third quarter. Clevenger gets it in. Nice catch. Audrey Bullinger pulls up in front of Williams. Good defense there. And the rebound to Bryn Barrett. Barrett brings it across the timeline. Kicks it over. Sieber thought about a three from the left wing. Passes it up. Oh, nice cut. Backside. Sieber can't get it to go. Bullinger with the rebound for the Zebras. Clevenger has Banks on her. 
Good defense, forces her to give it up. Hadeshell with Williams. And Hadeshell will be double teamed. And I didn't see the call. Must have been a travel because the Cavaliers will get it. Unless they called a quick jump. That was such a quick call there, I didn't even see what the official made. Either a jump or a travel. I'm going to say it might have been a jump. We'll see on the next possession, Arrow. It's going to be out of bounds. And it will be Cavaliers' ball. Barrett looking for a inlet. Gets it to Sieber. Good defense there. Sieber double team. She loses it. And jump ball. Well, it's going to be Holmes' ball, so Cavaliers will get it. So that other call definitely was not a jump. Must have been a travel. Sieber gets it in to Barrett. Three-pointer long for Barrett. McCarter gets the weak side rebound for the Zebras. Carter pulls up the free throw line, trying to get it into Bullinger. Good defense there by Libby Overmeyer. Gets the steal, and the Cavaliers come back the other way. Williams kicks it out. Overmeyer baseline, kicks it out. Sieber, three-pointer is long. McCarter with the rebound, and they're going to get Overmeyer on the over the back. That will be her second first on the Zebras here in the second half. Or the Cavaliers, sorry. <laughs> Zebras have it. Clevenger brings it across, gets it to Strasser, kicks it out to McCarter. McCarter pulls up, kicks it back to Howdeshell. Oh, nice backdoor Strasser. And it doesn't go. Weak side rebound. Bullinger, her shot off the mark. Sieber gets the rebound. And we'll bring it across for the Cavaliers. Much like the second quarter, we're about halfway through the third quarter here. Nobody has scored. Clevenger gets the steal. That's going to be poked away. And it's going to be out of bounds off of the Cavaliers. A lot of contact there. They're kind of letting them go. Being very consistent on both sides. So Avery Garland, the sophomore, 5'8 sophomore, checks into the game for Williams. McCarter, left wing, three. That's long. All of a sudden, uh, everybody's a little amped up here. They're all going to shoot a little long. Garland long on that shot as well. And good defense there by Banks forces the travel. Clevenger wasn't expecting her to be there. Eccles going to check into the game for How to Shell. Inbound Strasser, and it's going to be a jump. That will be Rochester ball. Good defense there by Dara Strasser. 3.39 to go here in the third. It's been a defensive battle here in the third quarter. Over the top, Clevenger with Banks on her. Tipped away. A diving attempt there by Eccles. It's going to be out of bounds off the Zebras. Going to give her a lot of credit there for a uh, great hustle. Not able to save it. Sieber gets it in. Garland, 10-foot baseline shot in and out. Strasser with the rebound, poked away by Overmeyer, and her bucket goes in. So the Cavaliers the first to strike here in the third quarter. And we got a foul coming up. And that is going to be on Livy Overmeyer. That is her third. And she's going to take a break here. They're going to put Williams in for her. Cavaliers lead by four. 
3.05 to go here in the third. Bren Barrett gets that pass on the inbounds. Cavaliers will reset. Barrett will bring it across the timeline. Banks trying to get it down to Barrett and good defense that time by Bollinger. It will stay Cavalier ball. Cross court and Banks kicks it up to Sieber. Trying to get it into Garland. Good defense there by McCarter. McCarter gets it up to Eccles. And Sieber able to poke it away from Eccles. Grace Sieber, the runner. And she puts it in over Eccles, 4-2. Barrett loses it, Eccles comes up with it. And a timeout, 32nd called by Coach Bowers of the Rochester Zebras. 17-11, 4-0 run here by the Cavaliers in the third quarter. And if you go back to the end of the first quarter, it's 14 to two run by the Cavaliers. And they have their largest lead of the game here in the JV contest of six with 201 to go. <laughs> Banks coming into the game for Sieber. Three-pointer off the inbounds by Clevenger, no good, but she gets the offensive rebound. Eccles pulls up from 15, and they're going to say she traveled. Gives the ball back to the Cavaliers. Grace Sieber getting looked at by the trainer on the Cavaliers bench. That's not a good sign for Coach Lowry if uh, she's hampered. She's going to be a big key to the Cavaliers and the varsity game. So hopefully it's nothing too serious for the sophomore. Minute 33 left here in the third. Cavaliers lead by six. Barrett, three-pointer, in and out. Rebound, Elizabeth Weaver. Wraparound pass, good defense there by Garland. Trying to get it around to Viger. Garland stepped into the passing lane. It's the turnover for the Cavaliers. Down to Garland, and kick it back up top. Barrett with it on the left wing. And Strasser got into the passing lane, but not able to hold on to it. Will be out of bounds to the Cavaliers. Inbounds to Williams. Williams gives it back to Pew. Pew going to reset here with 48 to go in the quarter. Banks into Williams. Williams turnaround, affected by Weaver. Strasser gets through. Shot no good, but Dara Strasser going to be going to the free throw line, shooting free throws. Personal foul called on Avery Garland, her first. This will be Strasser's first trip to the free throw line here this evening. First one is off the front iron. That's a good sign for the Cavaliers. Grace Sieber checks back in for the game, giving Williams a break. 
Second by Dara Strasser off the back iron, and Garland tracks down the rebound. And they're going to call Riley Clevenger with the foul. That will be her second, the team's second. Strasser gets the steal on the inbounds, and Strasser will be fouled. That will be on Sieber, I believe. That is the sophomore's first personal, fourth on the Cavs. Williams checks back in for Pugh. Watson inbound is deflected out by Garland. Cavs lead by six, 17-11 with 23.2 to go here in the third quarter. Clevenger, three-pointer, good. Riley Clevenger with 20 seconds to go in the quarter. That's the first points for the Zebras in the quarter. And back the other way. Cassidy Banks with two for the Cavaliers. Well, a flurry right there at the end of the quarter. And after three, the Cavaliers lead 19-14 over the Rochester Zebras. We will come back with fourth quarter action here in just a moment on RTC TV4. Back here as we get started for the fourth quarter, Cavaliers have pushed their two-point halftime lead up to five. As we move into the fourth, the Cavaliers 19 and the Rochester Zebras 14. And it will be Culver Ball coming out of the quarter break. Pugh kicks it out to Barrett. Banks shot off the mark, rebound, how to shell. How to shell kicks it over to Clevenger. <laughs> Clevenger, three pointer. That is two in a row for Riley Clevenger. And a turnover will give the ball back over to the Zebras. <coughs> Just like that, the Cavaliers' lead is down to two. Good job. Bullinger able to hold on to that pass, and we are tied at 19. And the Cavaliers want a timeout. We'll take a break and be back. Well, Riley Clevenger with nine points on three made three-pointers. Bullinger puts in a two with 5.59 to go. All of a sudden, we are tied here at 19 between the Cavaliers and the Zebras. And that one's going to be poked out of bounds. They're going to say the Zebras will have the possession. No, he was pointing the wrong direction. It will be Cavaliers ball. It looked like it was off the Zebras. I think he just got confused there. It's going to be a five-second call. Just able to get it in in front of the five seconds. Overmeyer gets it over to Pugh. And they're going to get it back up. Barrett will reset. 
Banks. Cross quarter, Pugh. Kicks it back to Banks, into Williams. Williams with Bullinger on her. Shot off the mark. Bullinger fighting for the glass. And they're going to call a foul on the Cavaliers on the rebound on the loose ball. And that is going to be on Banks. Her first, team's fifth, so one more foul before the Zebras will be in the bonus. Bullinger up and under, puts it in, and the Zebras back in front. The steal, but Bullinger was on the line. Six points now for Audrey Bullinger. Zebras lead 21-19, 5-10 to go here in regulation. Strasser knocks it out of bounds. Coach Bauer's team has really ratcheted up the defense here in the third quarter into the fourth. And the Cavaliers want a timeout. It is a 30 for the Cavaliers. Culver led 19-14 at the end of the quarter. 7-0 run here in the first two minutes of the fourth by the Rochester Zebras, and they lead by two with 5.09 to go in the regulation period. It will be Culver ball coming out of the timeout. And the baseball pass to Barrett, and that sails long. Turnover by the Cavaliers. And that one wasn't touched. Or it was touched. <laughs> the refs got together and it was touched, so it will be Zebra ball on the far sideline versus down underneath the uh, Zebra's basket. Over the top to Clevenger. And off of the fingertips of Audrey Bollinger out of bounds. Back over to the Cavaliers. Strasser putting some pressure on Bryn Barrett. <laughs> Barrett left wing three off the back iron. Pugh goes down hard. Actually, Banks, 31, goes down hard. So while they attend to Cassidy Banks there, it looks like maybe she's got some cramping or something going on. We'll take a quick break and be back in just a moment here on our Back TCC. here at John R. Nelson Gymnasium, 444 to go here in the fourth quarter and got an injury timeout on the floor. Cassidy Banks being tended to. The Rochester Zebras have a two-point advantage after trailing 19-14 at the end of the third quarter, the Zebras have come back and taken a two-point lead. So Banks uh, very gingerly walking off the court. Not sure if she had uh, some sh cramps or uh, they were looking like they were stretching her legs out. So I, hopefully that's just a, a cramping issue, nothing more for her. We'll hope that she can get back into the game. So it will be Culver Ball here. Pew to inbounds, baseline left. Looking. Go, 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 go. 
And Barron able to track that one down. And a foul coming on Hadeshell. It's only the third team foul of the half on the Zebras. No. They called Williams on the foul. Okay. So that's the sixth team foul on the Cavaliers. Hattishell, three-pointer off the back iron, and the rebound to Pew. And Pew travels. Good defense by Ella McCarter, forcing the turnover. Zebras have the ball back. 4.09 to go here in regulation. Clevenger brings it across the timeline for the Zebras. Give it to Howdeshell. She wasn't really expecting it. McCarter looked like she had an opportunity there on the baseline. Gives it over to Bullinger. And a foul coming. That will be bonus time. As that is the seventh team foul. So uh, Mia Hadeshell will go to the free throw line, shooting the one and the bonus on the second foul by Williams. Seventh by the Cavaliers here in the half. Now to shell off on the first. Gives the ball back over to the Cavaliers and Pew loses it out of bounds. So Culver gives it right back over to the Zebras. Out of shell. Looking for Strasser. Strasser goes down the Zebra's bench. Wanted a foul, but nothing was called. And they're going to say it was out of bounds off of Rochester. Overmeyer looking for an inlet. Gets it to Bryn Barrett. Barrett across the timeline. Gets it to Pew. Tight defense. Overmeyer, pull-up jumper off the mark. And he's pointing to Barrett. I think he's going to call her on a loose ball foul. So that will be Barrett's first. Yeah, they're shooting one and one. That's the second time. So that will put the freshman Audrey Bullinger at the line for Rochester shooting the one and one. That went off of the back iron, but how does Shell able to track down the offensive rebound? And that's going to be off of Pew. It will remain Culver Ball. Barrett tips that one out of bounds, so Rochester will get a little better inbounding position. Baseline right underneath their basket. Hadeshell gets it in the Strasser, kicks it over. McCarter thought about a three, pulls up from 15, kicks it back out to Hadeshell. Clevenger has Williams guarding her. Kicks it over, how to shell with Pew tightly guarding her. Pew comes over and helps. Knocked out of bounds. No, it stays in bounds. And a jump ball, and it will stay with the Zebras. 3.03 to go here in the fourth quarter. Zebras still lead by two. 
Out of shell, gets it into McCarter, back up top to Clevenger. She's going to reset. Williams on Clevenger. Nice pass in. Strasser, no good, but the foul coming on Libby Obermeyer. That will send Dara Strasser to the free throw line. Well, they're going to call Bryn Barrett on the foul. Looked like Obermeyer from my advantage point, but they say Bryn Barrett picks up her second ninth team foul on the Cavaliers. Two shots here for Strasser, and she is off on the first. 0 for 3 from the free throw line for the freshman. was a shooting foul there. I don't know. Uh, they must have got confused. Thought it was one and one. Second one off the mark for Strasser as well. So some opportunities here for Rochester to extend that lead have gone with nothing on the board. Lead is still two for the Zebras. Barrett into Williams, turn around, blocked by McCarter. McCarter up to Strasser. Strasser. Oh, a timeout. I was like, uh, I didn't see a foul there. So a full timeout called by Coach Bowers. We'll take a break with them and come back with more here from John R. Nelson Gymnasium in just a moment on RTC. Here at Culver Community, it's been a whale of a game here on the JV side with the Cavaliers and the Rochester Zebras. Zebras lead 21-19 with 2.25 to go. It'll be Rochester ball here under their basket coming out of the timeout. Zebras have had uh, some opportunities from the free throw line to extend this lead. Have missed two front end of the one and ones and missed two on a shooting foul. So it is still a two point lead here for Rochester. Trying to get it to Barrett. Good defense there by Strasser. And Bullinger comes up with the turnover. And Clevenger going to walk across the timeline for the Zebras. No hurry here for Rochester. Next foul, common foul, will be two shots as the Cavaliers will be in the double bonus. No, uh, no sense of urgency here. The Zebras lead by two. They're going to make the Cavaliers come out and guard them. Clevenger, nice crossover there on Barrett. Kicks it in, Bullinger kicks it back out. Good job there by Bullinger. She had an opportunity. Clevenger gets it from Hottishell. Smart move by Bullinger, though. She had an opportunity, but she kicked it back out to run some more clock. And a foul coming on... Q, her second, and that will be two shots for Ella McCarter. Double bonus for the Zebras. And McCarter off on the first. And McCarter good on the second. Don't even want to tell you what the free throw percentage is for the Zebras. And the Cavaliers call a timeout with a minute 12. 
full timeout. We will take a break and be back with more here on RTC TV. Right back Four. here with a minute 12 to go in the JV contest. The Zebras' lead is three, but they've left some points on the board here. We'll see if the Cavaliers can uh, we'll see if they go for a quick two and then a, a defensive stop or if they decide to uh, try and tie it with one shot. But Rochester shooting it. 3 for 12 from the free throw line here this evening, 25%. That's uh, it's not going to help you win the game as you uh, have a three-point advantage. Let's see if they can overcome that and uh, hold on to this uh, lead. That one poked away from Banks. Good to see her back in the game there. She went out. It still looks a little tender there. I don't know if you've got some shin splints or what's going on there, but good to see her back in the game. Barrett kicks it up to Banks. Barrett just inside the three-point line. Bucket is good. Cuts the lead to one. Barrett with eight. And a quick foul. On Pew will be her third. That will send out a shell to the free throw line to shoot two. Well, this is one of the most entertaining JV games you're going to get to see for uh, your money. It's uh, really been worth its while. And how to shell good on the free throw coming through in the clutch. The freshman Mia How to shell. Her first points of the evening. Off on the second. And the foul coming up on Bullinger. Only her second, only the third team foul. So one of two from the line, Williams loses the ball. But right back the other way, Barrett comes away with it. And Clevenger. And the arrow is to the Cavaliers. 42.1 to go. Cavaliers trailing by two. Poked away, but out of bounds off of the Zebras. Bollinger with a good defense there on Barrett. They have plenty of time, no need to rush. Barrett was trying to find Pew. Pew cut to the bucket. She thought she was going to cut back out. And the ball goes out of bounds, so the Zebras get the ball back with 23 seconds to go here in the game. Clevenger is down. We're going to take a break and be back here in just a moment. All right, so they checked her out. I think it was uh, hopefully just more of a scare than anything. She kind of banged her knee a little bit. So Riley seems to be in uh, good shape. And a timeout called by Coach Bowers. And it is a full timeout, so we'll take a break with them and be back here from John R. Nelson Gymnasium in just a moment. All right, game reset here, 19.9 seconds to go. We're still in the JV contest. It's been a great one. It is a timeout by Coach Bowers. I believe Riley Clevenger will be at the free throw line.
She went down there, uh, but uh, is able to uh, get back and, and go to the free throw line. So two shots here from the freshman. Opportunity to seal this game if she can make them both. And the first one is good. Clevenger with 10. The lead is three. This is the crucial one here for the Zebras. Off the front iron, so they leave the door slightly open here for the Cavaliers, 17.9. Ball out of bounds off of Rochester, so it will be Cavaliers ball here. The Zebras picking up in the full court. Pew gets it up to Overmeyer. Overmeyer has the ball poked away from behind by Dara Strasser. So it will be Cavalier ball here on the baseline to our left. 13.5 to go, and the last timeout here by the Cavaliers. As they want to talk it over, the Cavaliers trail by three with 13.5 to go. So we're going to take a break, come back here with more in just a moment on RTC TV4. All right, back here at uh, Culver, and... This has been a, one of the most exciting JV games I've been a part of for quite a while and also one of the longest. We're going on almost an hour and 20 minutes here since we uh, tipped this one. Still 13.5 to go. Cavaliers trailing by three with the ball here. See if they can get Barrett a three-point shot. Look good. Brent Barrett ties it with a three. And they foul... The foul is on Banks. They didn't want to do that. Barrett ties it at 24, but the foul on Banks sends Riley Clevenger to the free throw line. And a first in and out. Clevenger has one more here to give the Zebras back the lead with five seconds to go. Culver has no timeouts. And she does. She gives the Zebras the one-point lead. No timeouts. Got to go quick here if you're the Cavaliers. Banks at the buzzer. No good. The final score... <laughs> Rochester wins 25-24 in one of the best JV games you're ever going to see. That was a dandy, folks. Wow. I'm going to have to take my breath here and take a minute and catch my breath, I guess. Final score, Rochester wins it. After Bren Barrett ties it with a three at 24, they foul Riley Clevenger. She makes one out of two. And the Zebras win 25-24, the final score here from John R. Nelson Gymnasium. Well, that was a game. <laughs> that was a game. So here come the Cavaliers and the Zebras getting ready for the varsity contest. We will clear out the stats. I'll get you some final stats from the JV contest. Total up the scoring and uh, get you all the exciting action as we get ready for the varsity contest here between the Cavaliers and the visiting Rochester Zebras. We'll take a break and be back here in just a moment on RTC TV4. Right, well, we're getting ready here for the national anthem and some starting lineups, and we'll get underway here from John R. Nelson Gymnasium with the varsity contest between the Cavaliers and the Rochester Zebras. We ask that everyone please rise and gentlemen remove your caps as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem.
And now for the starters for tonight's contest. First for the visiting team on the scoreboard, Elaine Ebre. Number one, Cameron Burton. Number three, Riley Holloway. Number 10, Kaylee Watson. Number 34, Kennedy Jackson. And number 44, Amelia Cordova. And now for your home team, the Lady Cavaliers. Number 10, Grace Beaver. Number 30, Rose Peterson. Number 42, Lizzie Hughes. Number 44, Daisy McEwen. And number 50, Avery Darrell. All right, starting lineups for the Cavaliers, Sieber, Peterson, Pugh, McEwen, and Garland. And the Rochester Zebras going with Burkett, Holloway, Watson, Jackson, and Scorsone. Not sure how many starts Maisie McEwen has gotten, but she gets the nod tonight. Yeah. Uh, and uh, no Lucy Overmeyer in the starting lineup. Uh, so a mild surprise. And... Of course, with Rochester, the big story is what's Riley Holloway going to do for an encore? She had 24 points against Winnemac the other night. She had six threes in that game, a career high. And, you know, she had 11 against Lewis Cass, so that's two straight games in double digits for Riley. Yeah, she's really uh, coming into her own here in her first year with the program. So the Zebras have the ball. Start things off. Quick pass in. Score zone for two. Assist from Burkett. Back the other way come the Cavaliers. Trying to get it inside to Garland. She loses it. Jackson comes away with the loose ball. And there's a travel. Good defense that time by Rose Peterson. You know, we saw this Cavaliers team here against Pioneer, and I was very impressed with Rose Peterson. Yeah, transfer I mean, from South Bend Trinity, Granger, Green Christ, Granger Christian. Yeah, and and was, yeah, she's definitely played. You could tell that she had played some basketball before she got here. She's she looked very comfortable in about has good good basketball instincts. And just as we say <laughs> that, she throws a bad pass. The old uh, announcer jinx there, and Holloway puts it in for two off of the turnover. Quick timeout here, Coach Lowry as the Zebras. Wait, what? I think that would be the inadvertent whistle. Okay. I th think he thought he was calling a timeout. I think, he heard, I think Tim Smith was the official there. I hear the word time. Yeah. But he didn't hear the word out. All right, so the Cavaliers have the ball. Peterson gives it over to Sieber. McEwen sets it back up top. Tight defense there by Burkett. She's going to get called for the foul. Her first, the team's first. Rochester coming on to man. So let's see if Culver tries maybe a, some kind of backdoor offense. I mean, Rochester playing some right on top of the guards. And that's a foul on Callie Watson. Her first, team's second. So, I mean, Rochester's playing pretty heated man-to-man -man defense here. It's, I was kind of wondering if they would come on the zone, maybe force Culver to hit a couple outside shots, but that doesn't happen at all. And that is turnover number three in less than a minute and a half. Burkett pushes it up ahead. The three-pointer from the right wing is in and out. Off of the top and out of bounds, but he, uh, yeah, they hit the hit the, hit the uh, bar steel bar above the basket is what the official said, and I think he got it right. But that's frustrating because it did go in. 
Sieber gets into the paint, kicks it over to McEwen. Peterson's going to take a three off the mark. And Jackson with the rebound. Good ball movement by Culver there. Just didn't make the shot, but that's... Poked away there. Oh, Peterson steps in the passing lane. She's got running with Burkett, and that's good job there by Burkett. She did not let Peterson get any opening. It's going to be out of bounds. It will be Cavaliers' ball. You have to be pretty quick to outrun yeah. Cammy Burkett. Right. And Sieber shuffled her feet, so another turnover for the Cavaliers. Four turnovers already in less than two minutes. Would have liked to have seen her pop that. I mean, she's a very capable three-point shooter. She had an open look right there at mm -hmm. the top of the key in that inbounds. Right. Now, uh, I'll be curious to see if Culver tries more dribble penetration in this game because Winnemac had a little bit of success with that on Saturday night. Or, like I said, will they try some backdoor offense? Well, that's scary if you're Culver. You know, McEwen did a nice job. She came up and hedged that screen, but it took her quite a while to get back down on Scorsone, and you don't want to leave uh, Scorsone that wide open down low. They just didn't see her. Mm. Jackson holds her ground, and no call there on the shot by Peterson. And they're going to get Sieber on the foul. That will be her first team's second. Well, Rose Peterson's not had a whole lot of trouble getting through the press. It's kind of finishing. I mean, she has she's kind of taking on an attack mindset, but they haven't scored yet. Drive in Watson, no good. Rebound bucket by Jackson. Well, I like the dribble penetration though. We we have not seen a ton of that from Rochester guards this year. Holloway gets in the passing lane. She's going to go one-on-one, -on -one, the bucket. They're going to give it to her. They do. So Lizzie Pugh picks up the foul. You can see that nice defense there by Holloway. The bucket is good, and Holloway at the free throw line to shoot the and one. And not only has Riley Holloway picked it up offensively, she's picked it up defensively these past couple of games. She has got really quick hands and a quick first step. Off on the free throw, so the Zebras lead 8-0 with about five minutes to go here in the first quarter. And Sieber's got to get it across the timeline here, and she doesn't, and it's going to be a turnover. That's one of those cases, Val, the, uh, the rest of the team just left her and there was two Zebras on her and she just really had nothing yeah. she could do. Yeah, you, you've got to come and help out your teammate there. Uh, let's see, Lucy Overmeyer checked in for the Cavaliers. And Sid Hawes is in for Rochester. Holloway, three-pointer off the mark. Rebound, and Sieber finally comes away with it. Peterson almost took it away from her. Got Garland wide open there for a second. Couldn't get her to her. That was a bad angle. Just inside the three-point line for Pew. Shot off the mark. Holloway comes away with it. Good defense by Sieber. Hawes going to take a right wing three. No good. That's Sieber gets good, the rebound. That's not a good shot. You want to get an inside touch before you shoot those threes. I mean, Hawes was a couple feet behind the line. Sieber, long three off the mark. I see that shot, like you said there with Hawes, that shot probably wasn't as good of an opportunity as the one that she missed or didn't take on the inbounds play. Peterson gets the steal. Tries to split two. Scorsone gets it. Peterson takes it away from her, and it's going to be out of bounds off of Peterson. But uh, good job there by Peterson. And coming into the game is number 30, Lily Eaton, 5'6", sophomore for the Zebras. And Eaton coming off the best game of her career, eight points the other night. 
against Winnemac, including a buzzer beater at the end of the first half. Jackson catches and puts it down and scores. And it's a 10-point lead for the Zebras. Yeah, we, we said first quarter and fourth quarter that you're not going to be intimidated by their size and physicality, but unfortunately that's what happens. That's what's happened so far. So three-quarter court pressure here by the Zebras has caused some problems for the Cavaliers. There's quite a few teams that run this defense. Uh, Kasten's been running that three-quarter court pressure as well. It's kind of like a 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. Yeah. Score sewn on Garland, and she puts it in for two more. Score sewn and Jackson both have four, as does Holloway. Nice job of Millie kind of absorbing the contact and being able to finish. In fact, uh, Garland lucky she wasn't called for a foul there. Overmeyer shot off the mark, rebound to the Zebras. Watson pushes it across. Hawes gets it into Jackson. Jackson for two more. And it has been all Rochester here in the first quarter. And this time, Coach Lowry does want a timeout. It is a 30 with 2.33 to go here in the first. The Zebras lead 14-0 over the Cavaliers. When, when Rochester gets the ball and they get inside touches, good things tend to happen. Oh, yeah. yeah. They get good shots. Culver, I mean, they have seven turnovers so far in less than six minutes. Well, and, and they haven't made a shot, and it seems like when they do get off a shot, it's kind of a rushed shot. Rushed shot, yeah. We we talked about it in the pregame. You know, the size difference is huge for Rochester. I mean, you got Scorsone and Jackson. I mean, there's just nobody on this Cavalier team that can match up with them. And it's not just that. It's a strength difference, too. It, yeah. I think Jackson could probably take all five of the Cavaliers and put her on her shoulders and squat them. <laughs> I mean, she's just that strong. Had some uh, really good action. Did you hear that, Kennedy? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Had some really good action last night down at uh, Cass County Tournament. The Pioneer Panthers and Logan Sport boys and girls played. And uh, the girls with a uh, big win, which you would expect. But the, the Pioneer boys, for only the second time in their history as Pioneer, yeah. knock off Logan Sport. Yeah, Coach McKegg said first time since 1981. 1981 and the first time ever at Pioneer. McCune puts in, or uh, sorry, Peterson puts in the first one and gets the Cavaliers on the board. Well, hey, when you're struggling to score, Peterson had a good idea. I'm going to put the ball on the deck. I'm going to drive to the basket. Sometimes you get a foul. Two for two for the junior. Cuts the lead to 12. That foul was on Sid Hawes. And quickly back the other way, Scorson for two more. That would be Holloway. That was Holloway, sorry. The nice pull-up Scorson set up. What do we say about Millie? When, when she screens you, you tend to stay screened. <laughs> and Holloway was just kind of like, should I shoot a three? And no, I think I'll just dribble in a couple steps and take a two. She had time to think it over. So Jackson back in for Scorson. Good defense there by Burkett forces the turnover. Less than two minutes to go here in the first quarter. 14-point advantage for the Zebras. Culver with a straight switch on a high ball screen. Peterson gets in the passing lane. She's got one-on-one -on -one and takes it in for the bucket. She has all four of the Cavalier points. Good inside out there, Hawes. Going to reset it. <laughs> now Hawes turns down the shot there, and I thought that, that would be that would have been a good look there, I think. Right. Trying to get it into Jackson. McCune. Burkett comes away with it. Quick hands by Rose Peterson again. Good defense there by the Cavaliers. Hamilton comes up with the ball. 
Trying to split the two defenders. There's going to be a foul, and I think it's going to be on Burkett. That will be her second. Team's fourth. Watson and Scorsone coming in. Burkett and yeah, that's Lily gonna be, Eaton going to take a break. That's going to be frustrating if your coach Jennings says, I think Cammy was coming out of the game anyway. Uh, the next dead ball, and she winds up picking up her second foul. Right, it's an early two for her. Yeah, she was she was going to get a breather anyway. And they're going to get Holloway with a hold. So 15 foul on the Zebras. So they're quickly approaching that one and one mark, and we're still in the first quarter. And Peterson now getting a breather with Sieber coming in, and Rose, boy, she put in a lot of work out there. Already. I so Sieber takes the point here for the Cavaliers. Pugh Hawes with good defense on her. Jackson gets a hand on it. Watson comes away with the steal, pushes it up ahead, score zone, left hand, no good. Jackson rebound, no good. Jackson, and then we're going to have a foul on score zone. Before that second opportunity there for Jackson. So that will be Millie's first team foul. Sixth team foul on Rochester. So bonus coming on the next foul by Boy, that the That was a really nice pass by Callie Watson. Unfortunately, Scorsone couldn't finish, but that was a really nice look by Callie. Yeah. Uh, you don't think of fast breaking in Rochester in the same sense, but... And that is going to be one and one. So Sieber will be shooting. Who are they going to get the foul call on? It's going to be on Watson, her first. It'll be two on Cali. So 21.5 seconds to go here. The only thing that you can say that Rochester's done wrong in the quarter is uh, gotten called for 17 fouls. Right, and now we're going to see what it looks like without either Burkett or Watson on the floor. Usually at least one of them is on the floor. Sieber can't capitalize, misses the front end. Hawes rockets the shot in there to Jackson. Jackson back up to Hawes, and that's going to be out of bounds. Lizzie Pugh tried to save it. I think if she would have let it go, it was going to be out of bounds off of the Zebras, wasn't it? Yeah, I think she might have heard some footsteps. Let's see if Rochester, how Rochester does here. Oh, great pass. Scorson, bucket no good. Foul coming on Garland. That will be her first. And that will send Scorson to the line to shoot two with 5.4 to go in the it quarter. It was kind of like there was a lot of traffic in front of Hawes, and they just kind of all cleared out and just so Sid could get a kind of a good look at Millie in the post and let her right to the basket. Well-designed play by Coach Jennings. Off the back iron on the first. Again, Rochester's. Had that game against McConaughey, by the way. They somehow won despite going four for 17 from the line. This isn't a great free throw shooting team. Well, the, the JV, man, they struggled. They, they were three for uh, three for 12. Actually, four for 14 was what they ended up at for the JV. So after one here, the Zebras lead 17-4 over the Cavaliers. We'll take a break and come back. Second quarter action coming up here from John R. Nelson Gymnasium in just a moment here on RTC. Back here at Culver after one. The Zebras with the 13-point lead over the Cavaliers. And it's yeah, it's been a little bit of everybody, really. Holloway with six, Jackson with six, and Scorsone with four, actually five with the free throw. So pretty balanced scoring for Rochester. Rose Peterson with all four of the Cavaliers' points here in the first quarter. Right, and Riley Holloway has six points without hitting a three. In fact, Rochester as a team has not hit a three. So, that, you know, they had 13 threes against Winnemac the other night, but they have not been nearly as three-point dependent, and so far so good anyway. They're up 17-4. to four. Back door, nice cut. Sieber can't put it in. Saves it, gets it over, and the shot off the mark by Pugh. 
Hawes comes away with the rebound. That was yeah, a think, nice play set up there for Sieber, just not able to put yeah. that in. And then Pew kind of rushed her shot. If she had kind of just taken a step to see where she was and used the backboard, I think she would have had a better chance of making that shot. Might have uh, might have saw Scorson and Jackson yeah. coming at her. So Peterson uh, with the ball back in the game, 7.30 to go here in the first half. I'm surprised we've seen Rochester play as much man as we have. In fact, they've played nothing but man. We have not seen them in zone at all. Overmeyer, three, just long. Garland gets an offensive rebound, tries to get it to Overmeyer. And Eaton comes away with the ball, kicks it over to Hawes. Good defense there by Pugh, almost creates a turnover. Holloway. Oh, Eaton thought about it. And Sieber takes it away from Holloway on the pass. Sieber's going to challenge. Jackson, I think, is going to get called for the reach. So that foul is on Kennedy. And that will put Sieber at the line shooting one and one. And she can't capitalize in missing the front end. Peterson back in for Culver. Oh, Eaton gets by, can't convert. Nice drive to the bucket there, not able to finish. Well, you like to see it, though. Yeah. Uh, the dribble penetration. I mean, Lily, Lily Eaton, is she's as quick as anybody out there. Yeah. I mean, and if you've seen her in the soccer field, you will especially agree with me. Sieber, talk about it, soccer right there. She's using yeah. some of her foot skills. Again, everything I say has some sort of <laughs> weird reaction on the court. Right, right. I'll say somebody who's a great shooter, they'll miss a free throw. I'll say somebody who's a great ball handler, they'll make a, commit a turnover. I'll say the word soccer, and somebody kicks the ball. Oh, nice inbound score zone. Offensive rebound. Jackson puts it in for two more. Just too much size inside for the Cavaliers to handle. Jackson has eight. 15-point lead, approaching six minutes to go. Again, they're doing a nice job on that back door. Yeah, nice little curl cut by McEwen. So McEwen going to the free throw line. She's going to be shooting two on the shooting foul. Cavaliers will be in the double bonus from the rest of the or for the rest of the half. They're not helping themselves any here from the free throw line. Two front end to one and ones missed, and that one by McEwen. Rose Peterson has the only two free throws made for the Cavaliers. And we see Clevenger now in the game for Rochester, so let's see if she'll handle the ball now with both Burkett and Watson in foul trouble. 0 for 2 for McEwen. Clevenger gets it to Jackson. Jackson's going to drive hard to the bucket. Score Sohn, another offensive opportunity, no good. Peterson comes away with it. She has Sieber streaking down the floor. And Jackson holds her ground and blocks it. Zebras come away with it. Clevenger looking for Scorsone on the run. Can't make it, but uh, she's going to get some free throws. Riley Clevenger has point guard instincts that most seniors don't have. And oh, she's yeah. a freshman. Yeah. I mean, uh, again, I know she's been scoring a lot for the JV. It'll be interesting to see if she continues to be that kind of scoring type as her varsity career kind of gets going now. Or if she'll be maybe more one of those past first point guards. But she's got a nice looking shot, I know that. And she's she really sees the floor well too. Just has point guard instincts. Yeah. Two for two for score zone. She has seven and the lead is 17. And 
Yeah, I've been I've been raving about her on the JV all year long. I've you know watched her play since my gosh, Val. I think she was in fourth grade when she started playing with McKenna, and you know just watching her grow as a player. Three-pointer, Sieber in and out. Score son with the rebound. Eaton. Yeah, she took one too many dribbles there. She had Holloway running. Good job there by Sieber getting back on the defense. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that either that pass has to be released earlier or you just have to come to a jump stop and pull it back out and get into your offense. She, it, she saw her. She just took one too many dribbles. Peterson out to Sieber for three. Good uh, inside out that time off the drive from Peterson to Sieber. Holloway pull up from 15 off the mark. Score zone. And Peterson battling with score zone. Yeah, um, just some nice offense there by Culver. Just look, ran a little weave. Yeah, to get Peterson some some space to operate and a little driving kick. And a nice pass in, score zone, two more. Just nothing that uh, Culver can do with the size and strength of uh, Millie score zone. Avery Garland's a really good screener. I mean, she's kind of like the focal point of the, She's not a big scorer, but she's kind of a focal point of their offense. A lot of, they run a lot of screens off her. Runner by Peterson. Good. Well, she didn't get that screening ability from her dad. I'll guarantee that. Holloway for three. Inside touch. Kick it back out. Repeat. Yeah. <laughs> Jackson going to get called. That will send Sieber to the line. Double bonus time for the Cavaliers. That is Jackson's second. Tenth foul on the Zebras. And Sieber's had her struggles here from the free throw line tonight. 0 for 3, two front end, the 1 and 1s. Kuhn in for Garland. We see Elizabeth Weaver in for the first time. Comes in for Jackson. And Sieber puts in the second, puts the Cavaliers in double figures. 16-point Rochester lead. Clevenger is handling the point. And blocking foul on Hamilton. It's not there in time. Good drive to the basket by Holloway. Score sewn and travel. I could have seen a jump ball call. Did she come back down? I thought she was still in the air when he blew the whistle, but traveling is the call. It was good defense there by the Cavaliers. Overmeyer, baseline jumper off the mark. Weaver with the rebound. Holloway, left wing, three-pointer in and out. That was three-quarters of the way down. Not sure what, what went on there. Millie was on the other side of the floor. I, they didn't wait for her to post. And that one is out. Off of the Cavaliers, Peterson was looking for Sieber. Pass was uh, a little bit off the mark. 11 turnovers for Culver, 10 for Rochester. Peterson almost gets the steal. Eaton able to get it. Eaton, see that some of that speed there by Eaton. Weaver, and there is Peterson taking it away. And she's going to challenge Eaton, and good defense there. Kicks it back out. 
And that's an air ball from Overmeyer. And a jump ball, it will stay Culver. Just great effort by Maisie McEwen. I mean, in amongst the trees. Yeah. And she finds a way to get a hand on that loose ball and get a jump ball on the arrows pointing to Culver. That was a great effort by her. So Pew going to check back in for you, Sieber. Yeah, you don't win games by effort. You win games by putting the ball in the basket. And right. Culver has just not shot a good percentage. They've cut down on the turnover since the start. They're not turning the ball over at the same rate, but... Again, there's structure to this offense. It's not... Eaton takes it away from Hamilton, and Peterson is going to get called on the foul, her first, and that will send the 5'6 sophomore, Lily Eaton, to the free throw line for her first attempts here this evening. And good on the first. I was talking with Lilith after the game on Saturday, and she, you know, she had been in a shooting slump, and she just, well, she did what all sh young shooters should do when they're in a shooting slump. She watched videos of Steph Curry. <laughs> so just watch videos of really good shooters, watch it going in the basket, and then went out to the driveway to took a couple hundred shots a day in addition to what she was doing in practice. Overmeyer off the mark. Holloway with the weak side rebound for the Zebras. Minute 30 to go here in the first half. Clevenger scores zone out to Eaton. Shot off the mark. Good rebound on the weak side that time by Overmeyer. Gets it back out and the Cavs will bring it across. This is a pretty quick lineup for Racha. Rochester with Clevenger, Eaton, and Holloway all out there. Obviously, probably the quickest lineup would involve Cami being out there, but Cami and or Callie, but it's a pretty quick lineup, and then you got the two bigs with Weaver and Scorsone. Well, you know, we were talking about how deep this Rochester team was at the beginning of the season. You start adding in these girls. I mean, obviously the injuries didn't help, but you start adding in Clevenger. Here she is with a three off the mark. Uh, Clevenger and Eaton. And, you know, Holloway coming into her own. I mean, they're just gotten deeper. Nice little oh Euro by Goodness, Peterson. She has been uh, very impressive the two games that I've been here and watched her in person. You know, I think we talked about this in football before. I think it's true in all, really all sports. The more comfortable you are, the more confident you are, the faster you play. She just seems like... She's faster than everybody out there. I think Eaton got away with a walk there. Clevenger, three-pointer off the mark. Great box out in McEwen. Trying to get her to think that the clock was farther down than it was. And that's going to do it at the half. The Rochester leads 28-12. Let's take a look at that play by Peterson again. That was, uh, I mean, a, full, a Euro move at full speed. Oh, that's not it, but I'll show you here in a second. That was, uh, that was the first replay there. This one is the one by Peterson. That was not an easy play right there. And a great finish. And at the half, the Zebras lead 28-12 over the Cavaliers. We'll take a break and come back with second half. We'll get some stats and a uh, little halftime here and then uh, get ready for second half action. The third From quarter, Zebras lead 28-12. One more note, then we'll be back with the Lady Zebras on Saturday as they get back into TRC action Scorsone offensive rebound, no good offensive rebound. She's going to go to the free throw line. We'll be back at Rochester for the girls on Saturday night as they take on Southwood. That'll be an interesting matchup with the Southwood team. You know, Southwood's kind of been up and down. They're 3-3, three and three, I think, going into that one. Yeah, up and down's a good way of putting it. They've had some nice wins and some kind of head-scratching losses. I think they're, they're going to be a small, quick team, I would imagine. 
So Peterson picks up the quick foul, her second. Scorson is off on the first. Back iron on the second. Three of six from the free throw line for Millie. Back across the timeline, Peterson. Watson guarding her. Zebra's in that man-to-man. -man. They've been in pretty much the entire night. Overmeyer long on the three. Rebound attempt on the far side. It's going to be a jump ball. Good job, Peterson and Watson. It's a nice pass by Lizzie Pugh. They didn't make the, miss the shot, but that was a really nice look by Lizzie. You know, and, and that's, that's a sign that she's, you know, she's seeing the floor more, you know, from the right elbow to the left wing to get a reversal pass like that. And they're going to get Overmeyer with the charge. Holloway takes the charge. That is Lucy's first. Second team foul already here in the third quarter for the Cavaliers. Burkett jump out over Meyer. And Cammie loses it out of bounds there. Good defense by the Cavaliers. Forced the turnover. Tried to split the two and wasn't able to retain possession after the attempt. Overmeyer gets it over. Sieber gets it across the timeline. Sieber up ahead. McEwen off the mark. Side rebound. Jackson. And Jackson just going to go full steam ahead. And a foul, and that's going to be on Peterson. That is her third. So two quick fouls by Rose Peterson. Nice oh. inbounds. Score sewn, an easy two. What a pass by Callie Watson. I mean, that was. That had to be right on the button. We had, a, we had a really good angle there from where we were sitting, and that had to be right on the right on the dot, and she got it there. Sieber Scorson just put her hands up, and I think she got a piece of it. Back comes Watson. Jackson, as Overmeyer had went to the ground, can't put it in. And the rebound to the Cavaliers. Six minutes to go here in the third quarter. Maisie McEwen is working her rear end off out there. She is fun to watch. I can't imagine that it's fun to play Scorson and Jackson, but she's really working hard out there. Holloway with the pick. Nice give and go. Jackson back to Holloway for two. Great unselfish play there between Holloway and Jackson. And a 30-second timeout called by the Cavaliers. 20-point lead now for the Rochester Zebras. And Culver hasn't scored since that beautiful Euro step move by Rose Peterson late in the second quarter. Yeah. So I think that's what we're talking about, uh, uh, probably in the neighborhood of over three minutes since they've last scored. And now it's, you know, if you're Coach Lowry and your Coach Barron, it's, okay, how are we going to operate our offense with Rose Peterson uh, on the bench in foul trouble? Well, it's going to start with number 10 handling the ball, and she's got a, a tough defender on her with Burkett. She didn't get the uh, steal, but she caused it. Holloway knocked it away, and then Burkett comes up with it. Holloway, baseline three, good. Riley Holloway for three. I got her for 14, does that sound right? Yep. Two threes, four twos. And Millie is one rebound away from a double-double. 
Sieber very slow to get up. Score sewn on the other end. Two more for the Zebras. If your post player runs the floor, reward them. Get in the ball. Good defensive rotation by Jackson. Meyer gets it up. Sieber with Burkett on her. I think Sieber's going to have bad dreams about number one. Overmeyer gets her shot blocked by Scorsone. Watson can't save it. It's going to go out of bounds off of the Zebras. So Peterson going to check back in with the three fouls. Livy Overmeyer going to check in, as is Amaya Williams. So a couple freshmen checking into the game for Culver. Peterson coming in with 4.10 to go here in the third with three personals. Interesting that Coach Lowry would put Peterson back in the game and then put the freshman back in the game, and Williams didn't even know the ball was headed her way and it hit her in the head. Williams was trying to set a screen, and Peterson threw her pass. Overmeyer comes up with the steal. Lucy Overmeyer, I guess now i got to say first name since there's two of them in. Peterson, Burkett on her, kicks it over. Hamilton just inside the three-point line. Good. It's Hamilton's first bucket of the game. Burkett, nobody's really picking her up. I don't know who's supposed to be on her, but uh, she... There's basically a uh, loose ball gimme, and Scorson can't put it in. Hamilton comes away with it and brings it across the timeline for the Cavaliers. Williams sets a screen. Cammy was lucky she wasn't called for a foul there. Yeah. Nice jump there on the hedge by Holloway. Boy, Cammy's playing there. She does get the foul. Man, she is playing some tight defense. That's her third. I think if you're Coach Jennings, you'll take that foul with the defense that she's been playing. So Jackson in for score zone and Eaton in for Burkett. That's the luxury you have if you're Coach Jennings. You can uh, go right back in. And Peterson's heels are on the sideline, and that's a turnover for Culver. Kind of a smallish lineup here for Coach Jennings. Kennedy Jackson basically playing the five spot in this unit. Watson gets a Hawes screen. Good defense there by Williams on yeah, the switch. Yeah, that's... Holloway, three-pointer, good over Overmeyer. Boy, she's just getting more confident by the shot, Val. And she's somebody you can hit a three with a hand in her face. Oh, yeah, that was good defense by Overmeyer. Yeah, that, and a lot of, that's the difference between good shooters and great shooters. Good shooters hit the wide open ones. Great shooters hit the ones with a hand in their face. And did they get Watson before that or Jackson on the reach? I think it was Watson. Well, they got Jackson on the reach. Third on Kennedy. Savannah Eccles checking into the game for Holloway. Overmeyer can't get a grip on it. Jackson comes away with it. It's a nice little spin move, Jackson. Ten for Kennedy. Peterson, Jackson, good defense out top. It's going to be a jump ball. Take another look at that uh, play there a minute ago from Jackson. That is patented Kennedy Jackson right there. That spin move is pretty much unstoppable. So Rochester with the ball off of the jump. Watson gets it over to Hawes. Hawes, nice pass into Jackson for two more. 
When she gets you sealed like that, there's not really anything anybody's going to do on that. That and was an impressive job of Rochester reacting to a blitz. Because Culver hadn't blitzed the, the high ball screen very often. And they blitzed that, and Rochester knew exactly what to do. And that was a really nice, you know, Sid Hawes popped open and then knew exactly where she wanted to go with it. Watson into Jackson. Another assist. Callie Watson. Jackson with two more. I've got her for 14, Val. She has scored the last six. And there is a steal by Watson. Can't convert Jackson offensive glass, and she's going to get called for the foul. Went over the top of Peterson. So that's four on Jackson. Still have 50 seconds to go here in the third quarter. I think Coach Jennings is just going to let her go until she gets fouled out. Looks like he's not. Uh... I think with a 32-point lead, you can take that luxury. Eaton with the foul. Her first. Team's fourth. What do they say? Great defensive teams. They don't let you. They contest every pass. Lilith trying to do that there. Peterson's going to pull up. That's probably not the shot that Coach Lowry would want them to take with her basically having the ball the whole time and then pulling up from the top of the key. Let's see if Rochester sets something up here. As we come down to 10 seconds to go in the quarter. With that kind of a horn set. I tell you what, Val, Williams is just a freshman, but if she can play on-ball defense against the point guard like that, and stay in front of them. That's pretty impressive. She's a bigger player. She goes 5-9 if, if that's something that Coach Lowry can develop. Uh, you know, with this younger class, that, that definitely is going to help him. She had a nice soccer season, I thought, too. Uh, and was a good defender in soccer. Yeah. So after three, the Zebras lead 46-14. We'll take a break and come back with fourth quarter action here from John R. Nelson Gymnasium in just a moment. You're watching RTC TV4. All right, welcome back here to John R. Nelson Gymnasium. Val, you just saw, I don't know if you how much you've been following what, what we've been doing, but that Marshall County Fiber, it's a, a joint effort with RTC and uh, Marshall County REMC. Uh, pretty neat stuff. It's, it's working its way through the lower southern part of the county, but if you're an REMC member, eventually here when we get this done, there's a nice pass on that back door and Garland for two. But when when uh, when this all gets done done and said and done, the uh, objective is to have fiber uh, internet capability to all of the REMC customers throughout mm -hmm. the county. So I mean, it's that's pretty neat stuff. A couple freshmen in the game for Rochester: Ella McCarter and. Aubrey Bollinger. Bollinger with uh, McEwen on her, loses the ball. Peterson coming back the other way. Weaver in the game as well. I don't think she was in there at the end of the third, was she? I don't think so. Was she? Uh, no. No? Sieber with a runner in the lane for two. Yeah, that, that's going to be the next step for Grace Sieber because as people realize how good of a shooter she is, they're going to jump out on her and not let her get open looks and they're going to force her to put the ball on the floor and dribble and try to dribble drive and dribble penetrate to the basket. Jump ball will go to uh, Rochester. Bryn Barrett going to check into the game for Peterson. You know, there's, there's a lot, uh, you know, obviously if you watch the JV – uh, contest. There's a lot to look forward to here for Coach Lowry if he can continue to develop this younger group of kids. Eaton, 
Lily Eaton, well, she had two free throws, so she adds to that. She has five. She taught, yeah, we talked so much on Saturday night when I was talking with her. She talked about, you know, the importance of confidence. Yeah. Just seeing one shot go in, and then a couple more followed right away. Yeah. You know, she's come a long way, too. She was, uh, you know, when Macy was coaching here that one year for eighth grade, she was on that team with uh, with Lily was on that team. And, you know, she's she's really uh, come a long way in a couple of years. And, and to see her out here on the varsity floor and, and her stroke, her shot has, uh, like you said, just come a long way. And, and she's very confident uh, from the outside. Nice defensive rotation by Weaver there. Nice defensive rotation by Bowlinger there. You know, another player I love watching for this younger group of Zebras is Ella McCarter. I mean, she is just fundamentally so sound, and you'd expect that, obviously, from a McCarter after watching, you know, the way Grant played. And... Uh, but she's she's going to be a fun one to watch. She's got uh, she's got speed and she's got some size. You know she's going to be that kind of uh, intermediate wing type player for these zebras here as she gets into her sophomore junior year. Runner off the mark. A lot of potential Ella puns as well. <laughs> Headline puns. Just beware. She's yeah. And the foul on Eaton, her second. So sixth team foul on the Zebras, so Culver will be back in the bonus here on the next common foul by Rochester. Cassidy Banks now in there for Culver. I think... Culver's still kind of figuring out what where does Avery Garland fit. Yeah. Because she's I don't think she's really a post. I think she's got a nice looking shot. Yeah. It's kind of a it's a it's a it's a different looking shot. It's kind of like a a shot a kind of a shot put shot, but it comes off the hand nice, and she gets good rotation on it. And she might be more of a wing than a post. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I think necessity with her, though, is going to force her inside just because of mm -hmm. uh, their lack of interior size. Yeah. That was a great save by Elizabeth Weaver. And she was able to McEwen. knock it over to Bollinger, and McEwen gets called for the foul, her first team's fourth. Hawes trying to get it to Weaver. Good defense by Banks. Garland comes up with the loose ball. That inbounds play doesn't quite work as well. We need to have Scorson on the floor. That makes it a little, yeah, yeah. makes it a little tougher. So Barrett brings it across the timeline. She's a, another one of those players, you know, it's going to be fun to watch her progression. Nice looking shot just inside the line. That was a two pointer there by Barrett. Obviously, a, a coach's kid. She's you know knows the game, can play the game at such a high level, intelligence-wise, mm -hmm. and uh, not a bad shooter either. <laughs> Set a staggered screen to get Barron open. Nice job defensively by Hawes. Scorson, Watson, and Eccles check in. Nice cut. Banks going to be fouled by Scorson. Be her second. That will send the freshman Cassidy Banks to the free throw line to shoot two for the Cavaliers. 335 left here in the ballgame. 
And that one off the back iron for Banks. Remember the last time Rochester was here two years ago, Rochester trailed that game at halftime. Came back to win. 0 for 2 for Banks from the free throw line. Watson gets a screen from Weaver. Good jump there on the play by Obermeyer. And Barrett able to poke it away. And she's going to get fouled by Eccles. Be her first. And that will put the Cavaliers at the line as they are in the bonus. Eighth team foul on Rochester. Freshman Bren Barrett shooting the one and one. They said that foul was on McCarter. Really? I, uh, bonus is bonus, so. Yeah. And at this point, 49-21 with 3.16 to go. It doesn't matter a whole lot. And off the back iron, offensive rebound. No good. Garland gets another chance for the Cavaliers. Shot off the mark, Lizzie Pugh, and Weaver comes away with it. Nice defense by Pugh. Good pass, Watson in to score zone, two more. Lead is 30. And that was a nice job of handling that by Callie Watson. Pugh went over on the screen, so Callie just turned around and went the other way, and instead of dribbling into trouble, she got it to... Millie in space. And that is Millie's 12th rebound of the game. 15 points for her. You know that pressure defense up top from Pew and uh, Overmeyer has been solid. But the problem is they've been able to get it over the top into score zone for an easy bucket. So you know, half of it's working pretty good for Coach Lowry, and the other half on the second part of it, not so good. Got a full timeout by Coach Lowry. So we'll take a break with him and be back here with more from John R. Nelson Gymnasium in just a moment. And back here at John R. Nelson Gymnasium, it's been all Rochester here in the varsity contest, 53-21. Zebras lead with 2.10 to go here in the fourth quarter. I want to thank uh, Tara and Caden from our Culver TV and radio class helping out. Uh, Tara did the JV, and uh, Caden has done the varsity camera work for us tonight. And again, thank Justin Croy. Um, you know, he's, he's been great. He's been teaching the class for us uh, for Culver here. And, you know, just the enthusiasm and uh, effort that he brings to it has been great. Offensive foul on Overmeyer on the illegal screen, her second. There are a lot of parts to this Culver offense. It, it, it's not, it's pretty complex as girls basketball offenses go, but I, it, it's a good offense. It, it'll work for these for these girls, especially since they don't really have a true post. And Bollinger on the offensive rebound puts the bucket in, and that is her first varsity points. Right? Yes. That's what I thought. Foul on Garland is her second in the team sixth. Yeah. I just, and she's another one of these freshmen that, you know, if you've watched her over the last year, just the improvement in her game, and she plays everything. You know, we saw her in volleyball playing a lot of mm -hmm. varsity time, and she, she just has a big smile on her face all mm -hmm. the time. She's just yeah. having fun. Nice pass in, and McEwen puts it in for two. McEwen deserves that. <laughs> She has worked hard tonight. She, she needs about a seven more yeah. of those after the night that she's yeah. had. Is Audrey Bollinger a softball player? You know, I don't know. I would imagine she plays a spring sport. 
I think she actually, uh, now that I, now you say that, there's a three from Holloway. And that will start the running clock. Fourth three for Riley. 20 points. Um, I think she runs track, Val. Okay. I think her and Ella both run track. Poked out by Hawes. Again, I like Culver's offense. There's some weave stuff. There's some high ball screen stuff. There's some some side screens, some down screens, some. Mm -hmm. See, again, this is what I hate about the running clock. I mean, you know, this is a chance for some girls who don't normally play a lot to get some playing time. And. I mean, if somebody gets home two minutes later than they normally would. Right. I thought I was going to be uh, Eaton. It'll be uh, Willis third and the team's ninth. Free throw off on the first one. Facing these post players is really going to help Culver. You know, you face a team, let's say, like Triton, facing mm -hmm. Addison Veers, who's just been putting up monster numbers. In and out on the second offensive board over Meyer. You're running uh, Oregon Davis and, uh, you know, Hudspeth. Yeah. Over Meyer, left wing, three off the mark. And that will do it. Your final score, the Zebras win it. 58-23 over the Culver Cavaliers. And Rochester's 4-0 without Lexi Thomas. Who would have thunk it? As the Zebras circle up at midcourt, as they do after all their games, We'll take a quick break and come back here with our post game in just a moment here on RTC TV4. Hey there, welcome back here at Culver High School, John R. Nelson Gymnasium. Got it on tape now. Val was furiously writing there. He was uh, <laughs> mad that he wasn't furiously enough writing at the uh, halftime, so we got him here. Furiously getting the final stats for us. The Rochester Zebras pick up the win, 58-23 over the Culver Cavaliers. JV won as well, 25-24. And the Zebras move to 6-3. The Cavaliers fall to 2-8. Culver will be back in action on Friday. This Friday, right? Versus Lakeland. Uh-huh. And uh, it will be a boys, girls, girls, boys, however you want to say it, double header here between Lakeland and Culver. And for the Rochester Zebras girls, their next game will be at home on Saturday versus TRC opponent Southwood. So a big contest coming up for the Zebras as they look to uh, maintain uh, their spot in the TRC with uh, Southwood coming to Rochester on Saturday evening. So, got some final stats for us, Val? You're still furiously writing. Uh, one second here. Uh, one second here. Square root of 10 is... Okay. <laughs> Your square root? <laughs> Just wanted to see if people were paying attention. Okay, uh, final scoring night. First for the visiting Rochester Lady Zebras. Audrey Bollinger had two. Lilith Eaton had five. Kennedy Jackson had 14. Millie Scorsone had 17. She also had 12 rebounds. Riley Holloway had a game-high 20 points. She had four threes. For Culver, uh, Macy McEwen had two. Avery Garland had two. Kaylee Hamilton had two. Bryn Barron had three. Grace Sieber had six. And Culver was led in scoring tonight by Rose Peterson. She had eight. All eight came in the first half, though. 
So that is worth noting. Fouls, Rochester 19, Culver 12. Free throw shooting, Rochester was, neither team was that great. Rochester was 5 for 10 and Culver was 4 for 13. For the Lady Cavs, you've got to make a, a better percentage of free throws in any right. game, and you especially have to make a better percentage when you're facing, when you might be the underdog in a game. Right. Turnovers, Rochester had 16, Culver had 23, but it's worth noting, Rochester had 11 turnovers in the first half, only five in the second half. Yeah. So the that second half was pretty efficient. I mean, Rochester scored 30 points and only five turnovers. You will take that all day, every day. Sure will. And Culver, 23 turnovers, 13 in the first half, 10 in the second half. And we mentioned Millie had 12 rebounds to go with her 17 points, and Kennedy Jackson had 7 rebounds to go with her 14 points. Rebounding, obviously, a big factor in this game. We kind of knew it would be, and it was. But, I mean, I, again, Culver competed as hard as they could, given that just it was, and again, it's, just not a, it's not just a lack of height. It's kind of a lack of bulk. Yeah. Yeah. But you knew, and we talked about it in the pregame, obviously the, the size differential between Rochester and Culver was, was pretty evident. And, you know, it was it was very evident then when the game started with Jackson and Scorsone just kind of having their way inside. But you can't fault Culver. I mean, you know, Maisie McEwen, I mean, she just battled all night long. Grace Sieber was on the floor, you know, multiple times. And I, I think there's some uh, some ice baths in, in several of these Culver girls players' uh, futures here this evening. Yeah, and it's just, you know, I think – what we've learned about Rochester in these last four games is that they played they played together for so long that even when you lose an Emma Hodeshell and a Maddie Heinzman and Alexi Thomas, you can still kind of get by just because you played together so much. I think, you know, going into the locker room before the McConaughey game, and again, Rochester had just laid a big egg against Peru, I think it's fair to say. Yeah. And Coach, you know, Coach Jennings tells them, he says, Girls, six of you have started a varsity game previously in your career. Even without all the girls we don't have, you girls have done it before. You just have to go out and play with confidence right. and show them who you are. And, you know, they played a really good game against McConaughey. I mean, they played, you know, three and a half tremendous quarters, and the last three minutes of that game were kind of ugly, but played really well, and it just kind of carried over since then. I mean, I mean, these last three games have been, have been won by a wide margin. Well, that white shirt you see there is Coach Jennings. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we got you on TV tonight. Yeah, the, the, I, I tell you, the camera yeah. adds twenty a- at know? least. Yeah. At least twenty. So twenty uh, points of IQ. Yeah, I doubt no, that. Just Takes to that you, away. Just to you. Yeah, <laughs> being with you adds twenty points of IQ to me. It makes me sound, no. It makes you sound smarter. Okay. Okay. I make you sound smarter. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I really yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> Coach Jennings, can we ask you some questions? Sure can. Uh, Coach, it seemed like you came on a full court press, but it seemed like Culver, they kind of cut through that. So did you maybe just kind of lay back and go and play more man-to-man as the game progressed? I don't recall you playing a, a possession of zone in this game. Uh, we, we played a couple, not many. We got in a little foul trouble, but not not too many. I, I really wanted to play a lot of man-to-man in this mm-hmm. game because we, we played our last few games playing some zone and – our zone was starting to get a little flat. Um, you know, when we play man-to-man, we get up in our gaps and stuff a little bit better, and that should carry over to our zone, but we've got away from that a little bit. So we wanted to play some man tonight. Um, to start the game, we thought we really needed to put some pressure on uh, 30. Uh, I can't remember what her name is right now. The Rose Peterson. Yeah, Rose Peterson. I mean, she's a she's a real headsy guard and, mm-hmm. and does an excellent job and attacks the rim. She, she can shoot well. And then the, the C, I think it's Siebert, number 10, was the other one that we just wanted to put some pressure on them and make them work full court. So we just sent Cammie and Callie up there to, to pick them up and drop the other three back and just make her work a little bit. And they got past us and, and got some good things. But, you know, I think that constant pressure, there was a few times there that we kind of felt that they were starting to get a little bit tired and we just kept running some more players in. Um, and then – you know, when we got in a little foul trouble, we started getting a little too handsy and stuff and, and got in some foul trouble, so we just started dropping back and just playing some half-court man and trying to keep them in front of us. And they do a great job with that weave, and there was a couple times we mm-hmm. didn't jump out, and, and they took advantage of that. So, um, But overall, I thought our defensive effort, uh, you know, really came through again tonight. It seemed like Culver's defensive game plan was, if they saw a high ball screen, switch, straight switch. And it seemed like... They're the type of team that could do that because they don't have – they have five girls of similar height seemingly on the floor at the same time at all times. Yeah. 
So what was your kind of counter adjustment to that? So so I'm going to give away a lot of game plan here, mm-hmm. but nor- normally when people high hedge like that mm-hmm. and, and, and or switch that screen, mm-hmm. um, we usually get kind of a throwback going, in our, and we can just kind of reverse it back right off of that. And then our screener should be diving and should be one-on-one at the post. And, and we did get that a couple times, maybe more in the second half. Um, sometimes we can pop that post and still reverse, it, reverse the ball to the corner and then dive after that too. So we got a couple of options, but usually it takes one or two times of us getting stuck on that, on that switch or on that high hedge before we recognize what we have to do. And that's something that we just got to get better at. Riley Holloway scored 20 points again after scoring 24 the other night. What, what was maybe the, what has maybe been the recent turning point for Riley? I, I think maybe she's just now relaxed in her zebra skin. Mm-hmm. I think uh, I think she came out a little bit early on. I mean, there's got to be some nerves when you when you switch schools like that, and there's some nerves. And and I think she's really fitting in with everybody right now, and and she's really got that shooting touch uh, going right now. And, and I think the, really the best thing that I saw her do tonight was I think it was early in the first half, uh, we got the ball reversed to her, and she had an open three-point shot, and her person was really sagging in on the post. She took that one or two dribbles in and took a like little 12-foot jump shot. And, you know, yeah. when, when the, maybe the three wasn't I, – I don't know if she missed a couple of threes before that, but when you step in and you get that first bucket like that and you get kind of a night, an easy one like that, uh, it's really easy to get going on a night. And we got to just commend her for being just a headsy player for doing that. How are you able to manage the early foul trouble of Cammie and Callie? Um, you know, you go straight to a freshman. Ain't that what you do? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and you go to a sophomore in, in Lily Eaton. Uh, you know, they, they stepped up and did a great job tonight. Riley Clevenger came in second quarter, you know, late in that JV game. She banged her knee pretty hard, and, and we asked her, hey, can you still go? And she said, yeah, I can. And it's like I, I wouldn't expect anything else from her. And she came in, helped handle the ball, um, you know, uh, Eaton stepped in, handled the ball. I think she had a big three. I can't remember if that was first half or second half there for us. Third quarter. Yeah. So, I mean, they, you know, they step up and they do their job. Um, you know, they're practicing against against everybody day in and day out, and uh, you're pretty proud of all of them across the board. After the Peru game, you talked about it wasn't just the shooting percentage, it was the poor shot selection. How would you rate the shot selection in these four games since then? It seems like... I, are you getting the inside touches that lead to the kickouts? That well, I, I really mm-hmm. think we're still getting the same shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we're shooting the ball with confidence now, and I mm-hmm. think after that Peru that Peru game, we were still kind of shooting the ball, hoping it goes in. Mm-hmm. And once we started hitting a couple shots, and I told some girls that they're shooting at a higher percentage this year than what they did last year. When you shoot the ball, knowing it's going in, mm-hmm. or a good high chance of it's going in instead of hoping it goes in, you're going to make more shots. And I think that's mainly the difference. Um, you know, you look at our shot charts, it's in the same spots in the same same areas and pretty much the same shooters. They're just going in the bucket right now. You play Southwood on Saturday night. What are your thoughts on the Lady Knights? Um, uh, Ella Hoppert has been scoring in high, high I, numbers. Yeah, you know, I think she's the leading scorer in the conference right now. Um, you know, very... I think a very similar player to Lily Maple at McConaughey. I think she's probably more score oriented first, where Maple might be a, more of a pass oriented first, but still gets her points. Um, extremely aggressive young group. Uh, they're they're going to press the entire game. Uh, you know, they came out and gave Pioneer you know some fits in that first game. When you give a couple of D1 guards, in my opinion, uh, fits pressing, uh, it's going to be trouble, troubles for the Zebras. So. You know, we got to be able to handle the press, keep our composure, and and get it done on the defensive end and not give them too many transition layups. Thank you. Yeah, I would uh, I would keep an eye on her. Uh, she's, she can score the ball. Yeah. She, yeah she's going to be yeah, uh, she, she's a handful. Yeah, she is a handful. She, she can get shots up from anywhere and everywhere and, and really impressive, uh, strong. She, she, she's going to be tough for us to stop. How I, saw did, the, I saw that Lexi Thomas, by the way, was warming up before the game – is there any more of a prognosis on her? Do you have a better insight on when she might be back? Um, you know, I, I, her pain level is back down. Um, it's still it's it's kind of at a manageable position right now. So um, we're going to try to get her out. We we've been playing her some in the half court. We got her out through warm ups here tonight. Um, tomorrow night in practice, we'll probably see how long she can go full court um, and how she responds to that. 
uh, Friday night. We'll just put her back in for the half half court stuff if she's still feeling pretty good, and then we'll see if we can get her some spot minutes possibly on Saturday. Well, thanks, Coach. We'll see you back on uh, Saturday night against Southwood. Big TRC matchup coming up for you. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate thanks, the coverage. All right. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Coach Jennings, for taking a minute here with us. And uh... Coach Lowry, you got a second? We're, we're going to uh, we're gonna get Coach Lowry in here, too, as well. I'm only doing this because of <laughs> Oh, <laughs> don't don't uh, don't give any credit to the guy you're related to. Uh, yeah, just, uh, know. Just uh, to, you know I'm kidding. You know yeah. I'm kidding. RTC's well, part of what we do here. We have our Culver TV, so yeah, I'm, happy, I, I'm happy that you're here doing this for mm -hmm. us. To me, uh, not even worrying about tonight as much as looking into the future because you know that JV game was one of the best JV games I've seen in a long time. Yeah, uh, you've got. A good future coming up here with this program yeah well you know and kind of to talk to you a little bit about what we said to the kids um we knew uh what rochester had we knew what they could do and we knew what we had to do just to keep it close just to to be competitive and we started the game out with three straight possessions of not really doing what we talked about and they made it look really easy, and they don't even have their best post player or point guard. And I just got to give credit to the two post players that they do have. They run the floor. Uh, 44, don't want to say her name. I'm not sure I could pronounce it right. but Millie Scorsone. Scorsone. She beat everybody down the floor. I mean, you just watch that girl. It's heart and desire. And that's one thing our young girls can look at and she say. She has a little Gwen Zaner in her. That, I just said that to Randy. I said mm -hmm. that reminds me of Gwen Zaner basketball where you, know, you get trapped up top. Ali Zayner would just throw it to Gwen Zayner and turn and score. And the same thing with the Jackson girl. I mean, you just couldn't get around her. I mean, she's she's that, uh, you know, post presence that makes it difficult that if she gets a, a position on you and she holds it, you, you know, she, you're going to be buried. And we talked about that. We talked about fronting. We talked about, you know, being on the backside. We talked about digging from the guard position. And we did it a few times, but not consistently enough to make a difference. And, that's so what happens when the, uh, you know, when the scoreboard looks like it is, and and you just feel like there's not much you can do because of what the other team's doing to you, and then you don't do what we're, what you're supposed to do. But heart and desire, attitudes, this group, uh, day and night from last year. I, I just appreciate, uh, you know, the the you know positive attitude towards everything. They still worked hard even towards the end and we were dead dog tired i mean they just wore us down and yeah. kind of talking on the bench there we need to work on this we need to work on that and they, they tend to do that to some teams yeah conditioning was one thing that you kind of throw out because you know you they just post up and our post players have to work so hard for that spot and then you you're you mean i got to run down the floor after them <laughs> yeah i mean you got to fight them and then run down the floor and and you said it steve there's there's a, a that jv game was a fun game to watch and you know, we play Lakeland Christian Friday, and they don't have a, a JV team, so we can hold back some quarters. And we talked about it as a coaching staff with the post presence here. Our post presence is on the JV team. I mean, with uh, Amaya and Livy, um, you know, we had one quarter apiece for them. And you know, when do you use it or how do you use it or do you use it? You know, they, they battled their butts off in that first game, you know, leaving everything on the floor. Um, play until their faces were red. You know, it's one of those things where that was a fun JV game to watch. And our uh, middle school program, we have a couple classes coming up uh, there um, with some numbers and some girls who are committed, which that makes a difference if you're going to play summer basketball and you have a couple AAU kids there. Um, that's kind of what our middle school is showing right now. And this is the second year where we've kind of had to I don't want to say rebuild or whatever, but we had five girls uh, not come back from last year's team. One transfer and three girls uh, decide that they weren't going to play, and then Maddie uh, Shedrow uh, graduated. So it came back to where we had some inexperience and some youth. And that's the second year in a row of doing this. So hopefully we can get a couple groups here that decide basketball is what they want to do, and and then they decide to come out and, and – uh, make our program what it can be. And then looking at Rochester and Pioneer and South Central, we've already played some teams where they're kind of showing you how it can be done. So we've seen it. We've seen 
um, good basketball and teams and programs. Now, you know, what do we want to do with it? And, and I think we, we have the people in the right place. And, you know, there's a lot of experience on our bench. So it really helps out. And, and Coach Barrett helps all the way down. He's got a couple girls coming up. So, you know, there's some investment in our program. And, and there will be better days. Just, you know, you take this loss and you look at, uh, you know, what we could have done and what we didn't do and then apply that to LCA on Friday. And they're going to be physical. They're, they're mm-hmm. going to be a, a team that's going to give us everything. They're coming in. It's a boy-girl doubleheader, so it'll be kind of prime-timey with the game. So it's going to be a fun night, but we better be ready to play physical. We better be ready to do what we need to do, run our stuff and, and execute. And uh, good things can happen, and we've seen it this year. So, Can you describe the screening concepts in your offense? It's, Avery Garland was setting just a bazillion screens. Yeah, well, that's that's part of uh, Coach Barrett's mm-hmm. sets that we run. There's yeah, there's stagger screens, back screens, double screens. There's yeah. all sorts of ball uh, yeah. screens. I mean, it, there's so, some of our sets. There's four actions until you get the shot that you want. Mm-hmm. But it, what we need to do, and what what we are learning, is that when they jump to take something away, well, then the slips there. You know, and we got to get the girls yeah. slipping to an open spot. Right. If the of, defense takes away. A, yeah. then you go to plan B, yeah. and if they take away B, then you go to C. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's where we're at, and we're, offense is where we knew we'd have to uh, you know, do the yeoman's work. We knew that was going to be a lot of work for us, and this is the second year for these girls running all of our sets. We put more in than what we did last year, and we're building on that. It's just the fact of uh, you know, some girls who, I think I alluded to this, uh, we really had no stats to present to a preseason report you know it's like we're back to square one here where our senior um she started some games um not very many stats to talk about and then our sophomores were the same way they came on at the end of the year so we're all learning each other and then you mix those freshmen in with the juniors that we have i can't you know these juniors they play all sports at call that's one thing it's all hands on deck with these girls and i give them credit they play three sports and you know i i talk about the you like a sport you love a sport or you live the sport we got to get more girls to the love live side we've got a lot of girls that want to play basketball because they like it and they like it for the girls who do love and live it and uh once we get a good mix of that i think you know you'll see some good things happen but you know effort once again attitudes i i can't say enough about it i'm I'm happy with where these girls are in practice and what we're this is the first game where we've had an actual practice before a scout practice before a game. So it yeah, was. Yeah, you had mentioned was, that. We think yeah. we talked about that on the air. That yeah, it was scout played, game, scout game. We didn't have time to practice yeah. on. You played nine games things. before Thanksgiving. I don't think there was any team in the area that's played more than nine. No. They played more than nine before yeah. Thanksgiving. And and I got you know for our offensive what we're doing offensively, um, you know there are times where our the girls out on the floor you know where you get in foul trouble or whatever, they know certain numbers but we got to get them to know. You know, maybe you can run two and three and maybe throw in a four. Or, you know, we're trying to, to become more flexible with all of our girls of understanding the offense and what to do. It, it's – there's a lot to it. And and I know, you know, what Coach Barrett does in practice. He, he runs all the offense. We didn't even mix any bones about it. I said, you are the offensive coordinator, so don't even pair anything through me. That's why you see in our games, clipboard goes right into his hand when it's an offensive uh, – time out where we want to talk about and you know the, the girls are picking it up and it's been year two really so he this, is the, so. he is the matt Nagy of this operation yeah, well I, I don't want to call him <laughs> that because i'm the, i don't want to call anybody the matt Nagy. don't, don't <laughs> knock him yeah, go on val yeah, no yeah but no he he uh, i know you're a bears fan that's yeah, why i said well, that i'm not gonna say it but i think i am too um <laughs> but yeah no he he we he the younger groups are already running these sets. We've already implemented them all the way down. So mm-hmm. uh, sixth grade on, they're starting to understand what we want to do. And the defensive philosophy, you know, that kind of it changes, ebbs and flows with what you have. But, you know, running a gap defense, I think you can put that all the way down, uh, teaching kids to be in the gap and take away the paint or baseline. The, the gap, a lot of people call it a switching man-to-man yeah, where yeah, you switch yeah. on the high the high ball yeah, screens. Yeah, we've been doing a lot mm-hmm. of that too. and. and mm-hmm. I don't know. I think that's another area where you'll see better things happen when we can, you know, mm-hmm. come in and out of defenses. And right now, you know, we just don't have the personnel at the varsity level to pick them up three-quarter yeah. court, full court. I mean, it just 
it, it's it's tough. And when you're really bouncing quarters to, or you only have like tonight, we the freshmen had one quarter to play, so we had to pick and choose when they go in, and and you know they could we could stand to use a couple of them right now um, to step up and give us good you know breaks and energy. You just you look at us like I, we talked about; those girls just wore us down. It would have been nice to throw two post players in and get them out after a minute and have a little bit more energy to battle that. But, you know, we're just not quite there yet. But we'll get there. Two uh, two girls, you know, this is the second game that I've been able to come to and, and watch in person, and, and two girls that have really impressed me in those two games, uh, the transfer, Rose Peterson. Uh, I mean, she just – Val said, you know, you can tell she's played a lot of basketball. Yeah. And then tonight, especially, um, Macy McEwen, I mean, there's no quit. I mean, she was getting beat up, beat down, knocked down, drug down everything else and she kept getting back up and she kept battling against you know she was very undersized yep. obviously and, and yep. she was battling yep. for sure those two girls um the epitome of teammates as well when they come out they're cheering on the bench you know it's it's they cheer on their teammates when they go out there it's it's energy you know you watch rose uh digging in the post and fighting for rebounds she's led us in rebounds a couple games here and of course you know that's you know par for what we have with with really running four guards out there at any time but yeah and Maisie tonight was one of her I think it was her second start she started before it might be her second start and to ask her to come out like you said undersized against these girls she just has a lot of a heart and desire and she likes to go get after it and if we can uh, you know she hasn't had a lot of varsity floor time so if we can get that you know we can give her that uh, we talked about uh, by county and sectional. You know, those are the two big things um, that we circle right now. Um, and you know, it's not by county meeting tomorrow, so that's just right around the corner in January. Really, I mean, we don't. The, the draw come out tomorrow for by county. Or? I think that's when it is. Yeah, I know I had my Hawkins stuff in today, but yeah, by county is not too far away from from having meetings and talking about it. So oh. we as a team. Um, so it's usually around the first week in December the yeah. Bi-County draw comes out. Yeah, right. yeah. So mm -hmm. we as a team, where we can look forward to that. You know, that's something that that we can play towards. I know, you know, it's all, not all about wins and losses, and it's about getting better. And this team, it is. It's about what we can do every day to get better. And I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, promoting girls basketball in the Lady Cavs and giving us time to talk about it. Well, thanks for coming Thank up. See, it wasn't that bad. We, we got you up here, and, and uh, we got you talking about things. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's a lot of good things to look forward to here yeah. at Culver. I agree. Thank you very much. And, and tell uh, Justin, too, that, you know, I tell him all the time, but we just appreciate what he has done, you yeah. know, to get this uh, class going and, yeah. and everything Cul here. Culver TV, um, what he's doing down there is phenomenal, and the kids really love it. So, yeah. you know, we've wanted it for a couple of years, and now it's a reality. So, yep. And we yep. appreciate, you know, your help getting it started. Yep. Well, we, we appreciate you guys, and, and uh, you know, best of luck on uh, Friday against LCA. Thank you. All right. Have a good evening. Yep. Coach Lowry, thanks for some time. Uh, Val, some final thoughts? Again, Culver, Rochester just got up to a tremendous start. They were up 14 to nothing right at the start of the game, and that was basically the ball game right then and there. Culver could not afford to fall behind like that, and they did. Rochester, just a nice mix of inside and outside. Riley Holloway with 20 points. She had 24 against Winnemac last game. I can't remember the last time a Rochester girls basketball player had back-to-back 20-point -back games. Uh, I very sure that it hasn't happened in the Jennings era before. I yeah. mean, because in the Jennings era, it's been really balanced scoring throughout right. his entire run as coach. A lot of, back a lot of times somebody would have 20, and then the next night it would be somebody else. Right. Yeah. And then uh, and then combined with the two post players and really running the floor, this is as efficient a Rochester offense as we have seen. Yeah. And the defense kind of just followed suit. Yep. But uh, it should be a Tougher test on Saturday night for us against Southwood. As for Culver, the slow start really hurt them, but again, they are in the building stage of the program, and I think Coach Lowry kind of laid out. I, there was no need to talk too much about the details of the right. game, but about the, the greater vision, the long-term vision of the program. Yep. You're singing. Yep. All right, well, we'll be back. Um, Val will be at Wabash tomorrow night for the Zebras Wrestling. That won't be on the air, but he'll be covering that. I will be at Argus tomorrow for the Lady Dragons taking on Morgan Township. Should be a really good one. Yeah, we'll Morgan be Township beat North Judson. By one. By one yeah. on Tuesday night. Yeah. It's an Argus team with 
nine days of preparation, so they should be very well rested going against a traditional powerhouse team. Yeah. Coach Budka at Morgan Township, a terrific coach. He did a great We've job. Seen at, him a few times. He did a great job at South Central over the yeah. years. Now he's at Morgan Township. That is a program that has. For a 1A program, they have been consistently good for a long time. And they've always seemed to have uh, Argus's number through yeah. the years. They've given Argus some But when fits. Argus has beaten them, Argus usually goes on and does really good things. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. So we'll have that game tomorrow, and then on Friday, like we said, we'll have the Rochester boys taking on Winnemac, and then on Saturday we'll have the Rochester girls taking on uh, Southwood. Mm -hmm. Big TRC game for them. So... Thanks, Val. We appreciate it. Thanks for everybody tuning in. We'll say goodnight here from John R. Nelson Gymnasium. Again, the final score, Rochester wins 20 or 58-23 over the Culver Cavaliers. Good night, everybody. Hey.